Uh, today's session is about Azure Cognitive Services. Um, thank you for having me, by the way, uh, um, Martin. Uh, my name is Peter van Nede. I'm an architect at Azure Belgium, um, also a Microsoft certified trainer. You can find me on Twitter, as seen uh, in the previous slide, and uh, by email. So if after the session, if there are any questions, please don't hesitate. Um, a very small bit about Azure itself. Azure is originally uh, an, a company uh, founded in Finland. We are 100% Azure since 2011. We have four Azure MVPs. Um, actually, we are quite uh, dedicated to development with 57 experts of 61 people there. So we have very few overhead. Um, uh, a lot of experience in the company with an average experience uh, of 14.2 years. We are a six times gold partner of Microsoft. Um, we have a dozen Microsoft certified trainers. Um, and one of the, the most important uh, awards we ever received uh, was last year. We were uh, a finalist, uh, we were not the winner. Uh, we were a finalist in the application innovation award category. Um, so that, that, was, that was very nice. So recently we started here in Belgium, just two people now, and we hope to uh, get that up to speed uh, next year. So today's session is all about Azure Cognitive Services. Azure Cognitive Services is all about cognition. Cognition is about understanding uh, speech, understanding text, understanding images, and, and understanding what is on there or in there and the, and the meaning behind it. But one of the first questions that uh, we typically get when talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning is uh, the question, why should I care about these things? As a developer, I just want to write code. Um, I don't really care about, about those things. And the reason why you should actually care is that some of the issues or problems that you might be facing, facing as, a, as a technical or developer or, or an architect might be very difficult to solve in just code alone. And um, some of these things are, are typically uh, trying to identify objects or people uh, in pictures, uh, recommending products on the website uh, you, are, you are programming on, um, industrial processes, uh, detecting anomalies and detecting failures in there before they happen. So what they call predictive maintenance. And a typical uh, example, uh, not something that is offered in Azure Cognitive Services, of course, is uh, autonomous driving with, with uh, cars. So why should you choose Microsoft Cognitive Services? It's, it's quite easy because they come with a whole set of REST APIs. Uh, it's very simple to use. Just do a post or do a get towards those REST APIs with the proper authentication uh, and, and uh, you, you get the results very, very quickly. Uh, you don't have to grab something of the internet. It's all provided by Microsoft within Azure. It's very flexible, which means you can integrate cognitive services uh, in the language of your choice. There are SDKs uh, for .NET, for uh, Android, for Apple, uh, in, in, in uh, Node.js, Node.js, Python, and so on. So there's a, a real uh, wide variety of SDKs you can use, and you can use the, the programming language of your choice to do what you want to do with cognitive services. And perhaps the, the most important reason why you, why you would choose Microsoft Cognitive Services is that it has been tested by Microsoft Research um, and they, they have built a few machine learning algorithms that are very key, very good at what they do. They're very good at detecting images, uh, doing some image classification, detecting faces, uh, understanding what is in uh, audio, speech recognition, and so on. So these APIs are built by Microsoft. Uh, they are proven, and they are just they are being um, get, they are getting better every time you you use them. Actually, so uh, maybe it's a good idea to to talk a bit about the machine learning process in itself because that's not something that is very well known uh, in in uh, in general. Uh, first, to to be able to build uh, a machine learning model. Um, and to be able to teach or learn, or let it learn something uh, what you want to learn, you have to get your data. So in case of uh, vision, for example, uh, if you want to detect a face, you want to be able to get a lot of pictures with people on them, with faces. 
on them. So you want to be able to teach the machine learning model uh, what is a face in a picture or not. And you want to get a lot, a lot of pictures. Uh, the second step is about cleaning pictures. So um, you might get people uh, uh, or, or pictures with faces that uh, with with a detected face, but um, the face is not that clear, or, or uh, it looks like a face, but it, it actually is a, a picture of a picture. Um, so you want to be able to to clean that data, prepare the data, because in the end you want to train your model with correct data. So training the model is is all about having it crunch the numbers and getting the the correct output for your input. And uh, the, getting the correct output uh, of your input is, is all about testing the, data, testing the data and testing the model. So testing uh, the model is all about providing it with new data, data that it has not seen yet. For example, uh, uh, pictures of people that it ha has not seen yet during the training. And then you want to test it to, ma to make sure that how, how is my algorithm doing? How is my machine learning model doing? And in the end, if it's not up to par, you want to improve it by getting more data, being, making sure that that data is correct, uh, retraining and improving all the way. So this is uh, the, the five-step process uh, of a machine learning model. And that's exactly what Azure Cognitive Services provides. So there's a lot of stuff in Azure Cognitive Services in a variety of categories. So categories involve decision, all about decision making. It's about vision, so recognizing uh, something or classifying pictures. Uh, is this a cat or a dog? Uh, recognizing text, so your plain OCR is in there as well. There's another category about language, so everything about interpreting text or being able to understand some text, uh, which comes very in handy if you're talking about chatbots nowadays. Uh, if you go to uh, a site like bold.com or cool blue, they typically have chatbots in place, uh, which um, try to understand what the user is typing and get a meaningful answer out of that. There is uh, speech, uh, everything revolving, involving speech. So text to speech and speech to text are typical things you, you, you are aware of. Uh, translation is one of them. So this is in fact the combination of the language APIs with the speech APIs. So you're talking to a computer, it will, tra uh, tra uh, it will transcribe your audio. So this is speech to text, that will translate something using the language APIs and then read that back to you in speech as well. So this is something that Skype, for example, does very well. And then you have a whole bunch of, uh, of APIs uh, involving uh, web search. So everything that you can do on Bing or generally in Google, any web, any big search engine, you can do a customized version of that using the Bing APIs in the web search uh, category. So there's a whole lot of stuff in there, but what we're going to uh, focus on today during this talk is the vision APIs. So the vision category, as seen before, has about six separate categories, uh, subcategories in there. There's computer vision, custom vision, the face APIs, form recognizer, ink recognizer, and video indexer. The ones with the star are still in preview. Um, and what I will try to show you today, if the demo gods are with me, is a custom vision demo and a form recognizer demo. So obviously, um, AI and machine learning is all fun, especially with vision, because it, it's typical some, typically something that you're not used to doing. And uh, one of the, the things while, while researching the session, one of the things I found is that uh, although some uh, at, at the right side, you can see a, a drawing which resembles a rabbit or a duck, depending on the way you turn it around. But uh, even machine learning algorithms can actually have difficulties using this as well. Now, unfortunately, this is not something uh, I could mimic very easily with the uh, cognitive services APIs, or I would have shown it this way. Um, but this is a, a very nice example uh, of a, an optical illusion. Uh, both a duck and a rabbit are shown here, depending on the rotation of the image. And you can see that the machine learning algorithm, which is here based on the Google Cloud Vision APIs, 
which is the competitor of uh, Azure Cognitive Services Vision, uh, is, is easily, um, well, uh, um, it, it's not easy for him to, to decide what, what it actually is or not. All right, so a little bit about custom vision and the custom vision APIs. So why would you, for example, uh, need custom vision and, and how does it work? So uh, custom vision allows you to customize your scenario. You have the vision APIs or the computer vision APIs, which provide a whole bunch of APIs actually, but custom vision is just a step beyond that. So you, you'll want to make sure that it understands your specific um, situation and your specific problem and to come up with a solution for that. And one of the things I found online while, while researching this um, is that um, there are projects out there that actually have a webcam. Uh, you can see it on, on, the, on the right side. I have a webcam uh, pointed at the fridge so you can actually recognize which cans of soda or beer or whatever you prefer um, uh, are, in, uh, are in the fridge and how many are there left. So this is all about recognizing objects or classifying objects. Uh, a typical example of object detection is, for example, the, the example of the, the fridge and the number and the cans in there. Image classification, on the other hand, uh, will classify the image um, and will get you one result. For example, if you show it a picture of a cat, it will classify this as a cat. If you show two cats, it will still classify this as a cat. While the object detection will probably show you the correct number of objects in there if your machine learning algorithm is properly uh, trained anyway. So the custom vision has its own portal, uh, which allows you to upload your own images, to tag them, to label, to give them your own label uh, or name, and to be able to train a service to recognize objects or classify images specific to your domain or issue that you are having. So the, the, what they like to do is uh, use at least use as little as 50 images for a prototype. That's what they request, but you can get quite good results already with 15 images. Um, and that's what I would like to show you in, in the demo that, that comes on. Um, you can build your training model. Uh, you can build your machine learning model. Um, so it will try to try and recognize the things and objects or, or uh, perform the classifications that you trained it to do. Um, if it's not up to par or not within your expectations, uh, both from you or the business, you can keep improving that with more data, meaning more images um, and tagging and labeling more of them. And then uh, in the end, when you're happy about that, you can actually publish your model as a REST API. So it's very easy to use in your application. This can be both mobile or um, from within Azure and on the backend service and so on. So in short, you upload the images to the portal, uh, make sure there are enough of them for each of the objects that you want to detect. Train the model. This might take some compute and might will take some time, of course. Uh, it will take some iterations as well. That's what I'm going to show you. And in the end, we're gonna, gonna evaluate and make sure that everything that you put in there is actually properly recognized. Uh, it is still machine learning. It is still artificial intelligence. It should not give you a 100% success rate. Otherwise, it, the model has been overtrained. But in the end, you will get a very workable uh, thing, which is completely automated. You will be able to detect images or objects in an image um, and get, uh, automate an entire process where, for example, now it still is a, a manual process. All right, so let's, that's a lot of talking. Uh, let's move on to the demo. And before I show you a demo, let me show you how it is currently set up. So on my phone, which is an Android phone, phone I've uh, installed a Power App. The Power App uh, is something, uh, if, if people are not aware of what Power Apps are, it is a very low code environment. Um, you don't have to be able to, to code much actually to be able to make something useful. So the Power App is able to take a picture of a, a playing card uh, from a regular uh, card of decks, a deck of cards rather, it will upload that image towards Azure Blob Storage. 
Uh, I have a button, button for, that, for that, which just says upload in the Power App. And then uh, I'm able to click another button, which uh, allows it to predict, predict um, what is on the picture actually. So this is an, an example of object detection. There's not classification because it will be able to recognize more than one card. So by clicking the predict button on the Power App, I will be able, be, be able to call Microsoft Flow, or nowadays it's called uh, Power Automate. And this flow will call the Custom Vision API, which uh, in the back end has my train model in there. Uh, the result of that is going to an Azure function to be able to filter out some of the noise I'm having there. And then I will show you, or hopefully show you, the correct card in the app. All right. So um, let's start off by showing you some of the things here. Uh, this is the uh, this is just one resource group, and it's quite simple actually. Uh, I have the storage account here, uh, demo card storage, which. Uh, where the pictures where I'm, which I am taking with my phone are being uploaded to. Um, then I'm calling the Cognitive Services API, um, which I trained in the Custom Vision Portal, which I will show you in a moment. Uh, the API is hosted here. And then in the end, I'll just call the, uh, the Azure function, which is able to filter out the necessary noise from that uh, and return the, the info back to the, micro, uh, the flow. Microsoft Flow um, and show it into the um, Power App. All right, good. So um, maybe I'll show you the demo first. And for that, I need to do a little trick, uh, which allows me to show you my phone on the screen. There we go. Need to unlock it, of course. Okay, so I'll now open the camera so you can see what actually uh, is there. And just like any father uh, with two young children who needs a steady stand for his phone at us, um, what I did is build a, a Duplo tower to be able to hold my phone while I show you my demo. So let me place the phone onto the Duplo tower and not mention that one again. So when preparing the demo, I don't want to um, you know, make, do any advertising for this particular company, uh, but it is a company that uh, actually um, provides a deck of playing cards, which I, I used uh, whenever you order something. So I have a, a regular deck of playing cards here. Um, and as said before in the, in the uh, preview of this demo, um, one of the things you have to do is provide a lot of pictures uh, there are 52 cards in a uh, in a deck. Um, to be to take 15 pictures of every card for the demo is a bit much. So what I did is I actually um, took about 25 cards here, uh, took about 30 to 40 pictures of them each, um, com being a combination, adding some noise uh, to that to to be able to train the, the machine learning model. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle these cards like this. I'm going to put them here. And in the meantime, I'm going to uh, start my power up and disable the camera. So now my uh, first power up is starting. And you can see the same uh, screen, the, uh, this, the same um, table that, that I'm, I'm on, actually. So I'm going to pick up a random card just to show you that I'm not cheating. I'm going to click the upload button. The upload button will take the picture and upload it to Azure Storage, to the blob container. And once this is done, I'm going to click the predict button, which hopefully uh, will send the, um, the image to, uh, to the Microsoft Flow. Flow will added to custom vision and custom vision. Uh, the result of the custom vision API will be uh, uh, sent back to Azure Functions. And then it uh, is returned back into my Power App and uh, is displayed correctly here. 
So um, I'm not sure if you can read it. Um, it detected these uh, 10 of spades with a probability of about 98.5%. So this is quite good. You see a value there, which is the, the black check value actually. So um, let's try this again with another card maybe. Maybe I'm pushing my luck here, but let's see. Now let's take another one because this is very similar to the other one. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a picture of this one by clicking the upload button and clicking the predict button. There we go. We have the uh, ace of diamonds with a probability of about 97%, which is very nice. So this went quite well, actually. <laughs> All right, let's leave the cards there and move on to what is actually behind the scenes. Okay, so here you have uh, the custom vision portal, which is at customvision.ai, which is uh, a portal that is linked to my Azure Cognitive Service. And uh, you can create a project there. And one of the projects I created there is uh, regarding the deck of uh, playing cards. Uh, other things I have there is uh, about uh, interpreting um, the numbers on a, on a gas meter, for example. So this is the custom vision portal. And what you can see there is that um, you can add new pictures here. I'm not going to do that. You can add an, a lot of new pictures here, but typically what you would end up with, um, you would see a lot of pictures here in the beginning, the moment you uploaded it into the untagged uh, category. So once you tag them, and that's quite a, a cumbersome work, um, you actually have to, for each and every playing card, you have to draw a rectangle and then decide uh, what it actually is. So here uh, it, has been, uh, it has been tagged as the queen of hearts. Um, and you have to do that for each and every picture. So preparing this demo was quite um, heavy. Let's put it that way. Um, so I tagged all of this um, correctly, hopefully. <laughs> Um, and then I let it train. So you have two options here. You can have a quick training or you can have an advanced training. The quick training is just uh, after you upload your pictures for the very first time, it will uh, try to do a very quick training of about five minutes. Five minutes of work and you get quite okay results with this already. Um, but only after you do the advanced training and then you can set up um, the budget you have or the compute time it needs to take, uh, it can take quite a long time. So you can actually make sure that it sends an email after the training completes. And after that, you get a prediction model with, uh, with a certain iteration number. So if you go to performance here, you can actually see, see that I'm on my 10th iteration already. And uh, it has been a while since I first did it. Um, but uh, the very first ones we, were with just a few tags to be able to make sure that, I, that it was um, recognized correctly. And then as you go along, you can add more and more objects. Um, at the moment, I'm, for the demo, I'm, I'm still using iteration nine uh, because I, I'm still working on iteration 10. And here you get a precision result. You get a recall rate and uh, mean average precision. Um, I'm not a artificial intelligence expert, uh, but I do know that the results I'm getting for the number of images is quite okay. Uh, do make sure, however, that uh, you can see that the image count for the ASOS page, for example, is quite high, a lot higher um, than the other ones. So make sure that for your specific uh, thing that you want to build, make sure that the number of images is, is pretty much the same. And that's uh, what you can see here as well. Uh, unbalanced data detected, but it, it does act quite quite nicely. So um, you you would like to do a, a quick test, for example, with your current iteration uh, or one of the previous. You can upload an image here and make sure it does. Um, uh, you can upload it there, and it will show you the results from the model. And if you're quite happy with it, uh, you can actually um, publish this as a as an API straight out of the portal. It will give you the URL 
uh, it will give you uh, a certain key. Uh, remember, uh, I'll have to remember to change this. And uh, there's two ways to do that. One of them is to actually uh, provide the URI to the image that you need. And that's exactly what I have been doing. The uh, URI that I'm providing is actually the uploaded image or picture that I've taken with my phone earlier. And uh, the other way around, the other way that is possible is to just upload the image file itself. So there's two ways on each of the uh, Vision APIs to do that. All right. So I have this URL, I have this authorization key in there. Uh, it works as expected. I need to build my Power App. I have here one of them. Let me show that to you. It takes a while to load. But the Power Apps platform is a very low code platform, uh, pretty much drag and drop. And you can see me right there. Um, this is the demo, uh, the app that I showed you earlier. So what is in there? There's a camera control. It just takes advantage uh, here of my webcam, but on my phone, it's obviously uh, the phone camera. If I click the upload button, there we go. There's some very uh, low code here. Uh, it has a connection to a certain Azure Blob storage uh, configured in there. And I will just create the file and I will try to overwrite always the same file because that, that's easier for me and it doesn't um, populate my blob, uh, blob container. And it will just overwrite, uh, create or overwrite the same image over and over again. So um, the picture is going into the variable picture to predict. And this picture to predict is actually the image that I'm uh, uploading into Azure Blob Storage. The result of that uh, is the URI actually, or an object that, that contains the URI. Um, and once that has been done, I call the predict button. Um, and for that, I have an, uh, an action in there, which is uh, linked to the Microsoft Flow that I set up. And if we go to the Microsoft Flow, this one is right here. So this is the Microsoft Flow that I'm calling here. I will edit this so I can show you what's in there. There's an empty trigger here from Power Apps, which is um, very low code once again. Um, I could build this using the Logic, Apps, Logic App as well, but I decided to go for Power Automate anyway. Uh, here I have a connector towards my um, custom vision URL. And the URL that I'm providing is just a, a SAS token URL um, towards my image. And then here, what I'm doing is I'm uh, giving the result of the custom vision API or the, the iteration that I built and published. I'm giving this to my Azure function. My Azure function will clean up some noise. What do I mean by that? Here is the Azure function that I was using. Um, guess single card, that's the name of the function. It's just an HTTP trigger. Um, and what it does, uh, it, it gets the JSON from the custom vision API straight in there. I'll make sure that the probability, uh, because there, there might be more than one card guessed, but the probability has to um, uh, be higher than a certain threshold and a certain minimum probability. And then ordering, order by descending. So I'll make sure that I get the highest probability, which is the highest chance of being the right card. And then um, if I have a, a proper prediction, that's what I get, what I try to um, put out into the Power App, into the, into the response. And from this response, this is the JSON scheme of the response. As you can see, it's very limited. It has a tag, a probability, and a value. That's what you saw in the app already. And then I'll just respond to the Power App in itself. And actually, um, this, this model or these, um, these values that, are, that I'm returning to the Power App, these are actually, there it is again. These are actually the ones that I'm showing here. So the result object from the Microsoft Flow that I'm, um, that I'm using, are just going into the tag, the probability, and the value here. And the image that I'm showing is actually a pre-configured image. The pre-configured image is in a blob storage here. 
So depending on the tag that has been recognized, I just show you uh, a pre-configured image. There are dozens of uh, these things online. So this is one of the examples um, that is there. Voila. All right. So um, the Power App will, will uh, hopefully then return the correct result. One card is still not a lot. So um, let me go back to my phone. And uh, for those that actually that paid attention, there are, there is a second app which uh, tries to predict or actually uh, tries to classify the objects or do the proper uh, object detection rather. Um, and what I'm able to do right now um, is to pick another card, lay that um, next to this one. Yeah, let's mix them up a little bit. Yeah, and I can upload or take another picture, upload that to um, my blob storage account again, click the predict button, and hopefully that will give me the proper uh, blackjack result. And uh, we're lucky uh, we have a blackjack result, um, but uh, I can add uh, an additional card here like this. Take the picture again, do the prediction. Let's see what that gives us. Still blackjack. If you know the rules of blackjack, the ace actually counts for one or 11. And this actually gives me the, the correct result as well. So this is, uh, it was quite fun to make uh, uh, as well. All right, let's return to the demo. There we go. So hopefully um, this was nice to see and gets you started with custom vision as well. It's a lot of fun. Um, it, it does require a lot of work to prepare the data set, uh, but then you can improve it along the way and, and, and your own pace and it's very, very fun to do actually. So one of the other services in Azure Cognitive Services I'd like to talk about is Form Recognizer. And the reason why I chose this service in particular, although it is still um, in preview, it's, it's not generally available yet, um, is that uh, it, it's quite good at what it, what it does. And I haven't seen a lot of demos or, or talks about this yet. So I wanted to show you something uh, regarding Form Recognizer and the Form Recognizer API in Azure Cognitive Services is something which um, uh, is able to extract text, tables, uh, forms, and, and so on from documents. And this can be a document which you just have a, taken a picture for, um, or it's, it's a PDF that has been scanned, or it's a digital PDF, actually. Uh, you can do what you want. Uh, there's a whole lot of variety you can do. So what is Form Recognizer? Uh, form Recognizer is a set of APIs that allows you to upload a certain uh, number of documents or images of documents. Uh, you can uh, let it ingest that. Uh, there's a maximum size of four megabytes, so that might be uh, something to, to work around with. Um, and there's, there's OCR and uh, machine learning algorithm in there to be able to recognize what, what is on there. So it, and it's more than OCR because what you want to do is um, provide it with the same type of document over and over again. And this is specifically in, comes in handy when, um, for example, um, you have uh, an accounting department in a company, uh, you get a lot of receipts. Those receipts are typically from the same parking, uh, the, the same restaurants and so on. And those re receipts hardly ever change. So this is typically a manual job for someone in, in the accounting department to have to check the form or check the receipt. Uh, to be able uh, to verify that the purchase was legitimate and that the amount um, that you declared to the accounting company actually is the same on as the receipt. Um, but it will, if you start giving it the same receipt over and over again, um, well, the same type of receipt, 
uh, if you have five or more receipts from something, you can train it on that receipt so it's automatically able to extract data from that. Um, so it's unsupervised, so it will, it will, uh, you give it some data and it will automatically get, uh, if, if you provide it with more examples, it will try to improve itself and it will automatically get you the, the right data. Um, you can publish the model, of course. Um, and at the moment, there's no real surefire way to do that. There's a lot of APIs and a lot of uh, documentation around that. But one of the easiest things that we can do is actually, um, and that's a screenshot of the demo I'll, I will be using uh, right now. Um, uh, th there's a tool out there, a, a labeling tool for the form recognizer, and it's quite good actually. So let me um, talk to you a bit about the very simple demo I'm going to show you here. Um, I'm just going to, I have a Docker container, um, which points to the labeling tool and the labeling tool uh, you can find in the below URL uh, you see here. And the, that labeling tool is able to make the process a lot smoother. Um, it will talk to you for, uh, it will talk to the form recognizer API for you. It will train the model for you by just clicking a few buttons and it makes the whole process a lot less cumbersome. So, um, what I'm going to do now, uh, I'll first show you the Docker desktop. I just have one container here, um, which, let me zoom it, which uses the custom form labeling tool, uh, which is in the, uh, which I downloaded from, uh, um, from the, well, which points to, which I downloaded from the Microsoft documentation. It's, uh, there's a download link right there. And once it, it gets downloaded and you start it up, you get this screen. So I'm just um, surfing to localhost port 3000 here. You can obviously set this up in your uh, Docker, uh, ex uh, Docker setup, um, but you can point it in, in the connection you're having. You can let it point to a certain blob container. So the blob container that I'm using right here is actually pointing to um, a set of parking tickets I have. Um, so in in this particular directory or, or folder, uh, I have a lot of um, pictures of always the same type of parking ticket. Um, I point it there. I make sure that it's properly configured the project, and then here you get a list of images from that container. Um, and here I've already done some work. So if I click, um, let me find a sample, which you can read properly without turning your head. That's about it, yeah. So what you can do here, and this is now a sample already labeled, but um, if you have another sample like this one, you let OCR on the image and then you can um, make sure, and I have proper samples here, yeah. Let, it, let the OCR run first. You can actually select which OCR, recognize some text and which fields are actually, um, should be recognized as a certain tag. So here we have the, uh, the name of the parking. We have the VAT number, the start date of my parking, and you can see it's quite old already, uh, this receipt. You have the end date and so on and so on. And you can uh, provide it with uh, about five to six samples. And then you go here and you make sure that you train the model. And with just uh, here in this example, I have six samples. I have I've provided six receipts in total. And I train the model and I get quite high accuracy already. So uh, in, in a lot of cases, I get uh, up to 90% accuracy already. So whenever um, I provide a, a new sample here, um, let me try and find where it is. So I have a sample here that hasn't been uh, tested yet. And you can see some details here. Um, and whenever I do the run analysis, and you, now it's, it's within this tool, but obviously there's an REST API you can use as well. 
if I do REST uh, run analysis, it will upload the image towards the uh, form recognizer API. It will do OCR and it will return back the, the results of that OCR. And in specific, uh, it will return the tags that I uh, appointed it to or I, I trained it to, to recognize. So here you can see the, the name of the parking, um, then the VAT number, start and end date, duration, and so on. And of course, we, we shouldn't uh, forget the amount, uh, the authorization code of the transaction, and so on. So this is quite nice already. Um, obviously, when I show you Postman, hope that's a bit clear. You can do the same um, this way. <clears throat> So here um, you, let me make that a little bigger. You make sure you provide the correct model ID and the model ID is something that you can find um, in your labeling tool. You provide the correct API key um, and then yeah, the, the referrer URL is something uh, that, I, that I had to provide as well. And if you look at the body of the image, this is actually just binary data, the image in itself. So you can send this towards the API that you trained. I get a accepted results back. Um, and in the headers, I get one specific header, which is called the operation location. And this one actually points to another URL that I can use for that specific to get the results. It's, a, it's an asynchronous process. Um, in, in that uh, API and I can get the prediction back if I paste that URL here, I save it and I send it. This is the result of that. So there's quite a few, uh, uh, a few OCR results here with bounding boxes. For example, it found the text Q Park Zuiderport, which is uh, the parking where I, I am specifically located at. And if you go a little bit further down, here you can actually um, see uh, some of the fields that I defined as tags, and it will uh, provide you with a bounding box, uh, the string that is in there. Um, it will provide you with a confidence and so on. So here we have the start uh, timestamp, the name of the parking, the authorization code, and so on. So you can find it all there. It's quite easy. Uh, think about the uh, work that is currently going into um, uh, going through uh, receipts from employees and so on. Uh, so this, this is quite handy and can automate a lot of things and, and make sure that people um, don't have to spend a lot of time on that. Voila, that's about it. Um, let's go back to my slides. So fairly simple demo, but there's a lot of possibilities um, to do there. Another thing about Cognitive Containers, and I'm, I'm presuming right now because I see that the time uh, is becoming limited right now. Um, I'm, I'm going to presume that a lot of you already know what the difference is between a virtual machine and a container. But there are a few um, Cognitive Containers already over there. so. Uh, or, or being provided by Microsoft. And why would you need a container uh, for cognitive services? So this, this means that your model, uh, you, the model that you have trained is no longer um, only in Azure available, but you can actually install it onto a container and host it on the edge um, uh, on your own, um, in your own data center or on Azure itself, if you, if you prefer that. Um, it allows you to control your data. So your data is not sent over the internet. You can keep it in your own um, uh, VNet or, or whatever you prefer. Uh, you have full control over model updates. So um, you, you can update your model or to a new iteration whenever you want that, um, uh, which is not something you can do, you can do very easily with uh, the REST APIs you have there. Uh, available in cognitive services. It's portable, you can send it anywhere, which means the data is staying in your own uh, network. And of course, the, I think the biggest advantage is actually 
um, the high throughput and the low latency. If your machine learning model can spit out the results um, on the machine next to the one that is actually sending, uh, acting as a client, um, it's very fast and you will uh, not get a lot of overhead. Um, you still need to require you still need an internet connection because every 15 or so minutes, the container will actually uh, ping the Azure Cognitive Services APIs to make sure that all of the uh, calls that, that you used are uh, being properly built. Uh, I tested uh, by disabling the internet connection. Uh, it doesn't, it, it no longer works after uh, 15 minutes. It makes sense, obviously. What is already available, the anomaly detector, computer vision and face APIs, form recognizers is not fully there yet, but uh, it, it's getting there. Uh, Lewis, so the language understanding, um, uh, which is uh, used a, uh, a whole lot uh, with, with chatbots, speech service APIs and text analytics. Obviously, I hope there is more to come. Um, it, it has been staying that way for, for a long while now, uh, but uh, I did see that the face API container recently got updated with, uh, with the updated uh, uh, face models uh, straight from cognitive services. So before you go dive into uh, the internet or, or start your own project, I do have a few tips I wanna give you, some resources I wanna point out. Um, if you're interested and want to play with computer vision, um, on GitHub, I've uh, posted a Postman collection there with a lot of samples you can find um, for each and every one of the computer vision APIs. There's uh, quite some, some fun stuff in there. So if you want to take a look, that, that might be a good option to start from. Obviously, there is Microsoft Learn, um, a lot of uh, paths, learning paths and modules are available for Azure Cognitive Services uh, regarding vision, uh, regarding uh, text uh, analytics, regarding speech. And cognitive search is not something I handled or discussed today, but it is still there. And it's, uh, right now it is part of Azure Cognitive Services uh, platform. There is a free book. Uh, you just have to leave uh, this URL actually um, points to a Microsoft website um, and you have to leave behind your, your email address. There are ways around that, of course, uh, but there's a free book regarding Azure Cognitive Services from Pack Publishing. It's, it's quite, quite well written, quite good, uh, a bit outdated maybe, but uh, it, it is free. So you can use that as well. Um, and uh, last but not least, um, at least for me, uh, you can find the presentation material I used here um, on my GitHub um, page. So you can find all the stuff you need there. Um, and if you have any question, you can raise an issue there or um, contact me via email or Twitter. So that was my presentation. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you have any more questions, reach out and I'll be happy to, to help you out with that. Thank you for having me. Cool, thank you, Peter. Uh, very nice talk and good examples as well. Um, there is one question that came up in the, in the past couple of minutes and that is around costs. So if you look at your card recognition solution, what is the typical cost of that? What is the cost for uh, the recognition parts, but also what is the cost for the app part and the training part and, and things like that? Mm. Uh, very good question. Um, actually, I'm, I'm now trying to um, open up to the, I'm going to check if I can see how much it costs, but actually it is very negligible. Um, it is only built it's only built when you are actually using it. So um, right now I'm just making sure that I got uh, the billing from myself. And actually uh, I don't have a lot on my uh, MPN subscription, so I can share it quite easily. Um, of course, this is quite a, a, dor a dormant uh, subscription, um, and the demo is something I only use for the sessions, of course, but this now costs me about 10 euro um, just to be able to show the demo and play around with it for the last few days. Um, 
Of course, you'll you'll have a cost for storage, which is very 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 limited. Um, so let me maybe check if I can go a little deeper. So this cost me about 10 euro, uh, in which I spent about five hours of training time. So let's see if I can. Yeah, content services in itself uh, cost the most most because the compute time is actually built in in that way. Um, so you can see storage is, is almost next to nothing and content services is about 10 euro. Um, regarding the question in itself, um, how much is, is that spent on training part and how much is it on the recognition part? I have to I have to test that actually. I don't know a, a very good answer to that. Yeah, and, and maybe related if you run that uh, cognitive container on premise, um, is, is the cost the same or is it free because you are basically providing compute or? Good question. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure either, I'm afraid. Uh, no worries. Um, people who are still watching, feel free to ask a question in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll pass it on. I actually have a question myself around okay. the form recognition uh, that you showed. So very often what happens is you have a meeting that runs late or whatever, and um, I have this habit of scanning my parking tickets and so on uh, straight away. So typically while still in the car or in bad lighting conditions, or it's a little bit blurry and, and things like that. How good does it handle that type of, of imagery? Um, I've tested a lot with um, the custom vision APIs. Um, so what I did, and, and that's one of the things I, I try to think about as well. Uh, what I did with the portal, and I'm trying to get it here again. Right here, if I look at the training images, um, you can see what, what I tried is I, I, while training everything, and this is pretty much the same for the form recognizer, while training everything, make sure you have uh, different lighting conditions. Uh, so you can see here some, some sun in there in the picture. Um, at some point, uh, I actually tried to add some some noise into the picture. Um, I do remember to actually um, um, add spoons, and you can see me here uh, in my pajamas. <laughs> um, so th there's different times of day. Use shadows, use lights um, to be able to to make your model better, um, and that will actually be quite helpful. Um, so you can see here some examples of uh, noise I've added. Um, once again, I don't want to advertise the company, um, but by doing that and by making sure it's not always completely in a perfect condition, you can make sure that um, the, the machine learning model gets better and better, and it will actually be, be very good at, at recognizing it under different lighting conditions. Cool, that makes sense. And and did you did you try that with a form recognizer as well? Because I imagine like small, lightly printed text is a little bit harder than than identifying the playing cards. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let me bring that one up again. Voila. Here it is. So uh, one thing one thing I did try. So this is the tagging part of the tool. Um, so one one thing I did try. It's a bit hanging a bit. Just a moment. Yeah. So here I haven't tested this one in particular yet. Um, it did recognize the OCR OCR, um, but if you let's see if I can if I can properly properly uh, make this happen. Uh, I don't have the uh, image uh, either. I have the, I don't have the image on my on my laptop uh, anymore. But one of the things I've seen is uh, you can even scan it like this um, while only training with images that have it vertically. Um, even providing it an image that have it horizontally, it, it works flawlessly. So it, it's quite good. This is just with five to six examples trained now, uh, and it's very good. Of course, you have to make sure that when you take the picture. It's actually uh, in focus, and it it you can actually read it yourself as well. It's it's uh, uh, limited to the quality of the picture you take, of course. That does look impressive. I uh, I have to tell my accountants. Yeah. yeah. This um, is this is actually used within Microsoft 
um, and was one of the uh, hack results of the hackathon they had there. Um, within Microsoft accounting, they are processing about 90% of the receipts they, they have uh, at the moment uh, with the form recognizer tool. That's, that's impressive as well. And I can imagine there's lots of random, random kind of tickets and papers and forms in there. Yeah, there's a lot of people working there indeed. <laughs>